Hello, I'm Kristen Nichols. I cover hemp for MJ Biz, and I am thrilled today to be joined by Patrick Goggin. He is the lawyer for the California Hemp Council, and he is among the attorneys representing the Hemp Industries Association and a South Carolina company, Rebotanicals, that makes CBD. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe today with the Drug Enforcement Administration over the DEA's 2020 rule about processing hemp. He's going to refresh us on the case and on the next steps. Thank you so much for joining us, Patrick. It's good to be here, Kristen. Yes, so this case was an important uh, case brought by the hemp industries and rebotanicals, as you mentioned, to challenge the ongoing attempts by the DEA to engage in overreach and regulation mm -hmm. and enforcement within the hemp industry without properly recognizing the the farm bill, the definitions of hemp, the spirit and intention behind this, and to keep hemp out of the authority of the DEA. Mm. And so what, what's at stake here? Tell me ex exactly what the DEA is trying to do and how, uh, why, why they're trying to overstep, do you think? Well, I think they're trying to overstep because they're trying to make sure that their uh, budget is maintained and that they've sure. been constantly threatened over the past couple of decades by hemp's uh, expansion and their loss of regulatory authority. So, so they're, they're asserting it. And what they're trying to do here and what they say here is that any time folks are processing hemp, if that hemp uh, the, the amount of THC in that in-process hemp rises above 0.3%, then it becomes marijuana for all time, no matter if it comes back, if it's refined or so forth. Now, that's really important because when hemp folks are processing and extracting CBD and other cannabinoids and reducing the, or, or sig increasing this, the concentration of cannabinoids, it necessarily rises above 0.3%. Maybe there's some exceptions to that, but they're minimal. In most cases, it rises above 0.3%. So that means that potentially all hemp extractors are subject to enforcement under the CSA. And that is wrong. And that is against the intention and spirit of the Farm Bill. Mm. Give me a little rehash about the arguments. Uh, there was a lot of legalese, but uh, what did you make of today's oral arguments before the appeals court? Well, I thought our attorneys did a great job in a difficult situation. The court was very skeptical of whether or not we had standing, and they were really asserting and, and holding uh, HIA and, and mm -hmm. RE Botanicals to a high standard, and they did not believe that there was sufficient evidence to show that there was a threat of injury or actual injury giving basically authorizing uh, the plaintiffs or petitioners to bring the case in the first place. So they were very skeptical and they may have a point there. However, I disagree. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we do not need to have actual injury or harm. We, have, we need the threat of harm. And the implicit mm -hmm. within this rule is that they will be enforced against. In fact, the, the hemp extractors will be enforced against if it spikes above 0.3% and they know it will. And so there you have it. Sure. Um, kind of a, you represent uh, folks who are at all levels of the THC spectrum. In your opinion, is this case worth watching if you are on the THC side and uh, not making them? Well, I think that in, on, on the, on the THC side, they're, they're, I mean, unless they're engaged in hemp mm -hmm. extraction, which they may be at some point here in California and other, gotcha. other jurisdiction around the state. But, but if, they're, if they're just engaged in, in marijuana activities and operations, I don't think they're too concerned they're about already. it because they're already violating the CSA. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Any thoughts on next steps here when you expect a decision and what might change for the industry depending on how the decision goes? As you heard, the DEA says, oh, we're not really enforcing. So... Well, I would expect a decision to come out in the next, you know, three to six months. It takes them time to put yeah. their heads together and, and, and get to a, a consensus on it. But I, I, well, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful as I always am. I'm, I'm an optimist. I, I see this case as 
kind of similar and I'm drawing some similarities to our HIAVDEA uh, three case in which uh, we, we challenged, the, the industry challenged the marijuana extract rule. And in that case, the court, that was in the Ninth Circuit and the court held that while we didn't have standing, um, they ruled on the issue in any event. And they said that substantively that Congress spoke and uh, they said notwithstanding the, the Controlled Substances Act and the 2014 Farm Bill, and that, that to the extent that that marijuana extract rule conflicted with the Farm Bill, Congress spoke and the Farm Bill preempts the CSA. Here, the sense that I got from the court was they had an issue with standing, but they also didn't believe that that the DEA was authorized to enforce against hemp processing and in process hemp. At least that's the take that I had. Mm -hmm. So, so while there's a, it, it appears that that we're you know on shaky ground on on standing. I do think that there's a good chance that the court will get to the issue and get to the question of what happens if they actually enforce. And I. I'm hopeful that they will indicate that they cannot enforce against in process hemp. It will only be finished products that exceed 0.3%. That's my hope. They might, <laughs> we might not get there. I'm prog prognosticating, but we'll see how it goes. But in any event, um, what we're going to have to look out for is irrespective of this decision mm -hmm. is future enforcement. And, and frankly, frankly, I don't necessarily anticipate it regardless. I believe that this is DEA asserting itself, asserting its authority, asserting its position, and, and they act, they, they do these, these things and they, they issue these rules in hopes that it creates confusion mm -hmm. and that, it, it, that it, it, it spills over and that it causes issues or, or uh, interferes with, obstructs with the hemp industry altogether because it's, it confuses states and other sister agencies. So that's their MO. I think we will, will, will continue on beyond this, no matter what the decision is. We have to pay close to, uh, attention to the decision because whatever folks do in the future will be bound by it. And that said, it, it, while it's unlikely to happen, it, this could get appealed to the Supreme Court Sure. And, and we know that, you know, it's very unlikely that it were, it's rare that the Supreme Court takes uh, cases mm -hmm. and I'm not so sure they would do so in this circumstance, but it may not end with uh, this panel. And in That's fact, we, we could actually get to an en banc hearing if, if you know, there, there is that process yeah. to the, the entire circuit, so to speak. That would be very interesting. Well, I really appreciate you spending time. It's very early where you are. I should point out he's uh, Mr. Goggins joining us at the break of dawn in California. Thank you for sharing your insights with the MJ Biz readers, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks so much, Kristen. All right, Talk, thanks. Take care.